reading from the book of Acts. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there's no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or in speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and we will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have a boldness before God. And we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Dear Lord, may my words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you. Amen. Please Amen. be seated. <clears throat> About 10 years ago, I was on a business trip in a small town, walking to a meeting. I slipped on ice, landed hard on my head, and got a concussion. When I stood up, I looked around and realized I didn't know where I was. I had a vague sense I had been there before, but couldn't find my way. It was a really small town. No one was around at 7 a.m. I walked very slowly till someone found me. For some reason, I felt safe. Today, my reflections are about being lost in our lives and learning to feel safe. The first line of the 23rd Psalm is so familiar to us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. This Psalm is read at many funerals and memorial services as solace to us and in a way to the person who has died. We associate this psalm with death. Today, let us consider its relevance to life. I think the ups and downs of spiritual life are like having a concussion and being lost. Life comes at us with challenges, disappointments, joys, sorrows, successes, and losses. We lose our bearing. How do we find our way forward? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Let's take this sentence apart. The Lord is my shepherd. We do not find the way forward on our own. Many of us, myself included, find that not being in control is a challenge. Perhaps we confuse free will with control. We rarely get to decide on life's fundamental choices. We do get to decide on how we deal with those choices. We choose to follow Christ. We choose to accept him as our shepherd. By the way, 
whether we choose to follow or accept, Christ is the Christ, and he really is the shepherd. We wrestle with control most of our lives, staking out our capabilities, authorities, and ownership, acting as if what we have wasn't given to us by God. The Lord is my shepherd means we are, by faith, guided along the way of life. We wrestle with control and need to let go of fear just enough to be able to follow. Following is hard, <laughs> for following requires a commitment. It is not conditional. There is no negotiation or taking a shortcut. Following is being in step with Jesus. And sometimes the steps and circumstances of life lead us to discomfort and wanting. This brings us to the second half of the sentence. I shall not be in want. My guess is right now, today, there is some want in your soul. I certainly have wants. For most of us, there is some aspect of our life, or the lives of our family and friends, or the life of the world for which we are praying. And that prayer hurts. It hurts like a concussion. The focus of our prayers means something is not right. We are wanting. The challenge with our wants is we cannot satisfy them on our own. If we could, we would. Most of what we pray for is beyond our control. We cannot make peace alone. We can be peaceful. We cannot make someone well. We can care for them. We cannot make most wishes come true. We can just hope for them. So we sit here with our concussed sense of prayerful pain, not knowing what to do, how to be, what to think, or what to say. When I was lost, I walked slowly, think of my walking as a prayer, and knew someone would find me. Think of a kind stranger, a shepherd for that moment. The simple line, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want, is both the comfort and challenge of a faithful life. We have to seek control, we have to follow, we have to know the Lord will respond to our prayers, and we have to accept the response. Not being in want does not mean we get what we want. It means we accept sometimes with frustration or even anger, what the Lord provides. My concussion resolved. I am a more aware person since that fall. I walk more carefully. I am more attentive to the kindness of others. Whatever has concussed our lives, whatever our deepest prayers, the balm for our souls is that the Lord is our shepherd. We are not lost. We will find solace. We will not be in want. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation and those on our prayer list and those we name now silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, including those you name now silently or aloud. Barbara Baumgartner. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the restoration of peace for all in the world who suffer through oppression, conflict, and war. In whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread that all people may be gathered banner of the Prince of Peace, of the children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. 
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave of himself an offering and sacrifice to God. St. Martin's, we believe this is God's table. All are welcome. Wherever you are in your faith journey, come and receive. Healing prayers will be offered in the side chapel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, return all things to your Christ, and bring us to the heavenly country, where with Mary and Martin and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
The gifts of God's love for God's loving people.
Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out of the world in peace to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. My friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God the Father and the Holy Spirit and with Lena be with us now and always. Amen. 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 Please be seated for a few announcements. Thank you to our preacher, Janie Deek, a fine surgeon our Good Shepherd this morning. Thank you for a fine sermon and for our choir as always. And I noticed we had a new conductor, Miss, Miss Lizzie. <laughs> well done. And I can say it was well done because I also had my eyes on Tyrone who was watching with bated breath and a big smile. So bravo, I know you, you were fantastic. So also have been asked to uh, let you know that there will be worship reflections after the service in Hillary House with the Birdsalls, Laura and Mark. Is there anything else for you to add to that? And we have an announcement about um, the vestry elections, so pay, pay close attention. Go ahead. Huh? I will. Um, hi everyone, I'm Emily Law and I'm on the nominating committee. I just want to point you to the announcements at the back of the leaflet. We are seeking names for vestry candidates for one more week. And would any members of the nominating committee who are here today please stand up? Sandy Gould and Jim Fairburn. Anyway, we hope you give us some names. Thank you very much. And one more announcement from me. Um, as some of you are aware, Barbara Baumgartner died on Thursday, a beloved longtime member and activist, active member in almost every aspect of this parish. Her funeral service will be here on Friday at 11 a.m. There'll be an all-parish announcement that will go out tomorrow. And a special wel welcome back there, Jack Shepard. <laughs> Jack is worshiping with us again after a stint in the hospital, and welcome home. We are very glad you're here. I have a couple announcements, too. Sorry. Um, they're in your bulletin. The first one is the Children, Youth, and Families Spring Social, which is next week um, in the parish hall from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock. That's for the whole congregation, <laughs> particularly families, but really for all of us, to get together with uh, our younger families. And also tonight, uh, there's a spring social for just the uh, youth of the parish. It's, it's um, at Jason and Kelly Martin's home. So if there's any youth here, see, see me after because it's really important for you to get there. And one more, next week at, um, after the forum, we are doing uh, making a hundred peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for face to face to feed hungry people in Germantown so they get an extra meal during during the day and that's a new outreach ministry that we're doing so I hope you can be here by quarter of 10 next Sunday in the parish hall to help us make 100 peanut butter sandwiches thank you our closing hymn is hymn 518.
to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks to you.